and good afternoon and welcome to Locked in Stitches. Give me just a second here as I bring up our class. Okay, now having said that, I also need to turn the volume off on my secondary computer. Okay. Damn, you'd have me coming at you from like four different points. Okay, good evening. How are you this afternoon? As always, I am Julie Hall. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. And it is a rainy old evening here in Canberra. It was a beautiful day, but then this afternoon the storm clouds just sort of came through. So if you can hear that, um, that sound of rain on the um, on the metal roof, that's because my office is um, a sort of tin metal roof. But tonight we are going to make the glasses case. And let me show you exactly how it works. And it's just really, really simple. And what I love is once your glasses are in here, they cannot fall out. So they are just totally protected. Now, this came about, um, A, because I saw something similar online. Um, in beautiful leathers and things like that, but also because the beautiful Edward has a habit of putting his glasses in his pocket when he gets out at the shops or anything. And what he en what ends up happening is that then when he puts the bags into the car, the glasses fall out, and he's ruined a, like two or three different pair of glasses over time. So um, this is my solution. The other thing that I like about it is I can just hook this onto my handbag for my um, for my sunglasses, and it's all there. Uh, so you know, multiple use. They would make a great little stocking stuffer, and you will see just how easy these are to create. So the design comes in two different. Um, styles. We've got the one for using with vinyl, um, which is just a straight stitch edge, and that's the one that we're going to create tonight. The one that I'm going to do on Sunday afternoon actually has the satin stitch edge where you can use actual fabrics that you might have in your stash. And I can see we've got Lisa Callum with us. Good evening, Lisa. And this evening, I'm going to work with cork. Now cork versus vinyl is actually quite a thinner um, property of fabric. So I'm going to use the heavy felt then to give some structure and some, some stability to what I'm doing. And this is just a leftover piece of felt from when we did the embroidered baskets. Okay, so let's come over to the machine. Oops. Let's come over to the machine and actually come to the machine. And what I've got, first thing we're going to do is construct the back. So, what I've got is just my tear away stabilizer. And I've got a matching sort of color thread on top. And I'm just going to take my felt and my cork and what I want to do and most machines have this ability I'll just see if I can come through and scan it in to show you most machines have the ability to allow you to say exactly where the design is going to begin stitching so I'm going to pop that in there, making sure we've just got that little bit of wiggle room. And then I'm going to stitch colorway one. Uh, 
And I tell you what, as a colour mac, you can't go too far wrong on this. I'm glad I've got my glasses on. I doubt I'd be able to see where the darn stitches were. So this is so, so simple. There are only two colours. So the first one is the tack down. The second is where we are going to do the cross hatch to hold it all together. And good evening, Michelle Reynolds. Thank you for joining us. So how has everybody's week been? Had a fairly good week this week. I got some new stuff to show you a little bit later on. And I swear it is working. It's the stitching is there. It's just really difficult to see because I colour match this beautifully. Oh, another seven weeks in the van. I'm kind of getting my Christmas on at the moment. It's um, so I've got some new Christmas stockings, and I'm sort of starting to think about Christmas gifts that I'll do for for Edward to take to work and different things like that. So that's that part of the stitching. The last thing we're going to do is then just come around because we want a really beautiful triple stitch around the edge here. And it just gives you a nice finish. And then we will do... A marking spot in the centre where we're going to put our press stud. Okay. So this little mark here is just showing us where that press stud is going to go. Now, let's see. If it is prettier pictures or more visible. Now, the one mistake that I have made here is if I had put my felt on the back, it would be much prettier than it currently is. But I didn't. So, now I have the joy of needing to pick out. Okay, Michelle, really interesting way you phrased that. It sounds like you're packing Trish Callum and the embroidery machine to take with you. And what you want to do is just get rid of that excess stabiliser.
It's not a massive thing, it's just an annoyance. And it ticks me off because I know better. How do I know better? Because I've done this previously. So as you guys know, as a, you know, a little just to keep my hands in, I, I do a little bit of corporate training on IT. Well, the people who I do training for, they've asked if I could fill in for them on a course next week. And it's for resilience. So it's a, it's a soft skills course, which is something I don't normally train on. Um, so I, um, I was reading through and, you know, okay, resilience. I'm assuming using the words, you know, take a teaspoon of cement and harden up would be the wrong thing to be training here. Um, Suck it up, princess, would also be wrong. But I am going to download an episode of um, uh, what's the uh, it's the one that working dogs do from the ABC. Euphoria, Utopia, Utopia. Apparently they've got one on resilience. Okay. Now, it is much easier to do it. Oh, thank you, Gay. That's lovely. I appreciate that. Um, it is much easier to do at this stage than after you've put it together. Okay. So, get rid of all of that. And then I'm going to trim. Now, when I'm trimming this, what I want to do, and I always trim from the front side. And that's because, particularly with something thick, you can get movement between the front and the back. And you always want your best side to be shown. And I'm just going to go a little bit larger on each side, but that is, and I'm, oh yeah, there you can see my stitches. Okay, so after that, now I told you this is going to be a quick one. It is amazing just how quick this one is because I just so happen to have another hoop all ready to go. However, it's probably worthwhile loading up the second design. And the second design is about eight inches. So you're going to want your eight by eight um, hoop on there. And my design has been sent. And oh, what the hell, we'll leave it right in the centre. Okay. So, um, now what is it they say? It's, um, it's a foolish man who doesn't, listen, who doesn't learn from their own mistakes. It's an absolute idiot who doesn't learn from others. Now, this one is much more... Um, it's the larger part of the design. So this is the piece that we are stitching. And the first thing that we're going to do is stitch the outline. So because there's a lot more room for things to go wrong, And I know, it looks a little bit pervy at this stage. And Kathy Otterkirken, thank you for joining us. Gail Murphy's with us as well. 
Okay, so these little nodules are important. But first things first, I'm going to come through and put my felt underneath there. And then, ooh, can you hear that? The angels are moving the furniture. Then lay that on top um, and stitch colourway too. And just smooth it out as you go. And then it is back in for the marking on where our um, where the cam snap's going to go. And then we're going to start our quilting or the cross hatch. And while that's doing that, I'm just getting together a couple of little bits of painter's tape ready to use. Now, again, this is great for those slightly larger scraps of specialty fabrics like your corks and your vinyls. So whilst Edward and I have one car at the moment, um, I've taken to driving Edward to work on a Thursday and then picking him up. And at the same time, I do the grocery shop and I do you know whatever else I've got to get done. Well, I've also started taking the car and filling it with petrol because I can go and line up at Costco and get the petrol for a lot cheaper. And when I say a lot cheaper, this afternoon, compared to the Woolworths Express cost, the next town over, I saved 23 cents by sitting in line for 10 minutes at Costco. Now, I know not everybody has the, you know, the time to do that, but good heavens was I happy to do it. Sorry, that's 23 cents a litre, too, not 23 cents in total. Uh, over my 63 litres, I think I saved um, I really am liking how this is colour matching, though. Um, but it's $1.94. Yeah, see, $1.94. I filled up at $1.90. Unleaded would have been $2.13. Okay, so now what we've got here is that finished or put together front. Now, to put the entire thing together, you're going to come through and you are going to turn your hoop over. And remember how we've got these lines here. And let me just see if I've got a yellow marking pen. The worst thing is I've got my brown marking pen, but I don't think I've got my yellow marking pen here. I think it's on the other table. 
where I could show that one point is there and one point is just there. And all we're going to do is then come through and this is a little bit wider and it's a little bit wider so that it gives you that ability to come through, lay that on, line that marking up with that marking and then we are going to place one piece of tape there Now, notice when I do all the taping, I generally try and go outside or inside of the stitching area. I do not like to have the tape running or being in the same place as the stitches. It just, it doesn't generally lead to good things. So, once we've done that, carefully, careful, careful, careful. Put your hoop back on. And you can always see whether there's any movement or anything. Now, this is now thick. So I am turning my speed all the way down. And then... We stitch the final colour. Yeah, my, my car was pretty well out, so it was the territory. My car was pretty well out of fuel. I was it just started binging that it had 80 kilometers to go. And it cost me $126. So next week, Cameron and I, because my Costco membership's up for renewal, so I'm going to take Cameron with me. Okay. Now, let's see what's happened here. Okay. So, generally I would assume that that is because of the thickness of the thread and it's gone from being in the thick part to being in the thin part that it hasn't appreciated that um so edward rarely goes to costco without me so what we've decided to do is i'm going to put the membership in cameron and my name so that he can fill up his car, I can fill up my car. And we're just making the most of it. Oh, can you hear that? Okay, so let's come and have a look. So now, if I take off my tape, the angels are definitely moving some furniture. So has anybody started on their Christmas stitching or Christmas um, present list? I'm feeling pretty good. Grace chose, because with my guys, they always get new pair of Christmas PJs or new pair of PJs at Christmas. So Grace chose hers today. So 
So I now have one present collected. Wahaha. -ha. Okay. So now it is just a case of coming through and trimming around. Now the hardest part is going to be where you are trimming through the double layer. And I'm just hitting that double layer right now. If it becomes too much trouble, what you can do is do that one layer at a time. So I could come through and cut around like this. And now, when I say the reason we do that is so that we don't get too close, you can see how much closer that is getting on this side than the other. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to trim, first of all, this side. Now, if I'd used the, um, the thinner felt, not an issue. It's, but this felt is going to protect those glasses like you would not believe. And I'm not too worried because I can always come through and retrim and make it neater as I go along. So coming through and just cutting that off there, I can then make it a lot neater there. Yes, you could pre-cut on the digitals. Um, The worst thing is every time I do this, I keep on thinking, oh, I should go and buy myself those, um, those glasses I've been looking at. I really need new sunglasses, you see. Okay, so what I am then left with is my sunglass holder ready to have an eyelet put on this side and a cam snap put on that side. Um, so you can see why I think that is just a really stupendous little product. Like, I just love how elegant in simplicity that is. Now, to give you a little bit of inspiration, this is what I've been doing this week. Now, I wonder if I can just come up a little bit. Oops, 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 oops. Okay. So this is what I have been working on. And this is my stained glass Santa stocking. So I've done that with my um, 11 by 18 inch hoop. And that's from there to there. Then I've come through and I've done a topper piece so that you can have a custom nameplate piece on it. So we released this one yesterday and it's been, um, it's been going quite well. The one that I'll be releasing on the weekend, so same size, 
but very, very elegant, um, is the snow um, is the snowflakes. And then we'll be adding the um, the colouring in one in there as well. So there'll be a couple of them. We'll release them every couple of days over the next week or so. But they are just some cool pieces that I have been playing with. Okay, so what do we think? I think that that is quite a cute little one. Um, and that one is probably going to go on the side of my handbag. And all I'm going to do is put a little carabiner clip on it so that I can just clip it onto the side of the handbag. And now I can go shopping for some um, glasses so that I can have sunglasses with me as well. Okay, let me just make sure there's nothing else here. Okay, I told you that was going to be a really, really quick one. Um, you know, you could easily spend a day getting these done and having them as stocking stuffers for all of your loved ones. Um, and I think that would make a really cute one. Okay, so that is it from me. You guys can all go and finish enjoying your dinner. Um, thank you for spending time with me tonight and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, have a stitching day. Bye.